So in today's video, we're looking at seven ways to bring external data into Google Sheets. Let's start with the website. So one thing to keep in mind is this method doesn't work on a ton of websites because they often use JavaScript and make it dynamic, but Wikipedia is one that still works. One way to verify, and so I'm just looking at this table here, is tables and lists usually work the best. Now, however, you can bring other things like this in as well. And I have a different video on how I bring data in from Wikipedia. But if we have a table like this, we can right click and go to inspect. And then what we're looking for is table or a UL like this or a OL. Uh, so UL is unordered list, OL is ordered list. So often those we can bring in. Now again, it doesn't mean always, but if we find that here, we have a good chance that we're gonna be able to bring this in. And so what we're gonna do is grab this URL, which I already have here. So let me copy this. And then what we're gonna do to bring this in is a method called import HTML. And then we'll put in that URL. And then our query is either list or table. And so that was a table. So I'll just type in table. And then which table are we looking at? And so you may not always know you'd have to count through however many tables. You can, however, just iterate through by doing one, two, etc. Now, one thing with doing external data like this, as you can see, we have this warning. And so since I just put this in here, I know we're fine. And so I'm going to go ahead and allow access. And you can see that it doesn't look like that is the correct table. So let me go to two. I'm still not correct. Let's go to three. And there we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit of fiddling to get the right table. But now we have that table in here. And I can get that set the way I like. So there's my first reference to external data. Second is going to be pretty simple. We're just looking at doing a image. So the one thing to make sure is that you're getting the image address. And so you may see link address and image address. But if you're having issues trying to figure out which one you need, you can do open image in new window. And once you have the image just like this and you see a PNG or JPEG, something like that ending, then you can copy that link and bring that in. And so in here, we're going to do image. And then we can do that URL. And then that should load it right there. All right. And then our third method is going to be bringing data from another Google Sheet. And so this is a common thing that you may have to do. And so here, for example, we just have some data on this Google Sheet. And here is the tab name. So that's important to note as well. And so to do that, we can either copy just the ID, which is between these two forward slashes, or I can grab everything before this edit and do that. So either way, and again, I have that right here. So I'm going to cut that real quick. And then the way we would refer to this is import range. And then we take that URL or again, we can get rid of this and just do that ID as well. Either one works. And then the range string, I can get my comma in there. The range string is the tab name and then the column and row reference. And so that was data and then make sure we add that exclamation point and then it's going to be the rest of that reference. So in this case, we do a one through C six. So a one through C six. And then we'll close that out. So these are both wrapped in double quotes and a comma in between. Go ahead and enter. And then you will see this. And so if you don't have access to the Google sheet, this won't work for you. But if someone is available to allow access, only one person needs to do this. So once we allow access, that will show up in here. So maybe we want to wrap these, bring these in a little bit more here and probably make these a little wider. And so there's the top names for those years, just like that. All right, so that's our first three methods. And then we're going to look through some other ones. So first of all, if we have a CSV, and so we can look at what this looks like and it's downloading for us. So we can actually bring this straight in to our Google Sheet. Now, there are some size restrictions to keep in mind, and so you may run into an error if that CSV is very large. But we're going to go ahead and do 
that's let me start this over again import and then here we're going to do data and then we can put in that url and again with double quotes around it and then optionally you can set the delimiter which is what separates the data so uh, csv is commas between and then stuff like tsv is tab and so we can go ahead and leave this blank and see if it gets it automatically and sure enough there it is so we can pull this data out and this is just a list of banks that looks like they went bankrupt and there's the closing dates we can format that real quick to a date and so we can adjust things like this go through and make it look a little different if we want to So once we get everything set the way we want, we can go to our next one, which is a RSS feed or Atom feed, as you may call it. And so if you have one of these, if you have that URL, you can do import and then we have import feed. And so we can just put again that link in there, close it out. And there's some other optional things you can do, what data you want, headers and so forth. And so let's just actually see if we can do true for headers. And there we go. So title, author, URL, and summary. So that's how you get a Atom or RSS feed. And then I'm going to do XML and then we'll finish with JSON. Or JSON, depending upon how you want to pronounce that. So XML feed is a little more complicated. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. So an XML feed, you can pull up in your browser and this is probably going to be necessary and potentially needed and so if we do this import xml we can put that in here now first of all it needs a path and so xml is a little more confusing because it requires you to put a path so you can do something like a forward slash an asterisk and that should get things and so it kind of does, but it makes kind of a mess here. And so typically what you want to do if you look under here, so catalog is the overall one. So if we do catalog. And it looks like that maybe did it for us. And so basically whatever you do here, it will iterate through. And so you can have different structures. And so I don't have the time to go through all the different ways that can work, um, but you could do could iron down into plant, which should be pretty similar, but now it's doing it like that. So you can kind of play around with this. If you have an issue, you can do some research on XML structure and get an idea of how to do that. But that is essentially how that works. And then finally, we'll go to our JSON or JSON. And so I have some JSON data here. And so let me go ahead and grab that, put that here. So again, um, there is some feeds like this that have to be authenticated. So I'm not going to cover that in this video. I just want to quickly show you what this would look like. And so this one does require some app script. So I got a little simple script here. I'll parse it and it has the feature of adding a little path, which we will need to do this. So first of all, let me just see if I can do this. So this is a custom function that I put together. And so here we can see reference does not exist. So it's kind of arrowing out on this. Now, what we need to do here is we can add a path. And so kind of like the XML, it's a little bit like that where we have to add this path. And so you don't always have to add it. Sometimes everything's up front. But in this one, if we look, so these note an object, these curly braces. And within the object, there might be items that are referring to. So for example, here we have meta and that goes into these items and this object actually has an array. So the curly braces are objects. These are arrays. So arrays can be iterated through. And so typically in a data set like this, you're looking for something with an object. And so this one's even called objects. Now it may not be called, maybe called data or people or who knows what this could be called. And so you may have to play around with this, but the way I have this set up in here, is if we add a path, so if in this instance, we'd be adding objects, it will get that in. And so let's go back to our JSON. And then I'm going to add a comma and then objects. 
and there we go. So now it's pulling it in. And so if you look, there's the caucus, Congress numbers, current description, and so forth. So now it's pulling that data in. And so that concludes today's video on seven quick ways to bring external data into Google Sheets. Make sure to check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, have a great day.